involved in us. Um, and also, as someone who comes from just up the road, thanks to those two people for bringing this to Newport. Newport's an amazing city, and sometimes you can get a bit overlooked culturally, so it's brilliant to uh, this is here. Uh, Tashani and I met in uh, February in uh, Calcutta, and we're going to read uh, two poems each, um, based on the kind of affinities that we found uh, between our work, so that you can see our different approaches to two similar sort of themes. Uh, the second pair will be love poems, and the first pair is about something we found in our work, which is our willingness to write about memories and write about our parents um, before we were born. So to kind of um, imagine or emphasize our, our way into our parents' lives uh, when they were young people. Um, this first one uh, is about my father, when my father was a young man. It's about the filming of this movie called Arabesque, which happened in Crumlin, uh, which is a mining village just up the road. And uh, Gregory Peck and Sophia Loren came to Crumlin uh, to shoot this movie, and my father was there to try and get a look at them. <laughs> Sunday. The crowd beneath the viaduct waves banners made from grocery boxes, bed sheets. Welcome to the valleys, Mr. Peck. Wind turns their chapel dresses into floral parachutes. Their perms don't budge an inch. The emotion of it's too much for one girl's mascara. We love you, Miss Lorraine. My father parks away from them, around the corner, in his brand new car, a 30s Lanchester, with stop-start brakes, a battery he shares with a neighbor. All sideburns and ideas, a roll-up behind one year and a flea in the other from my gran for missing Eucharist. He coughs and steps down from the running board as two Rolls Royces pull up opposite. Gregory Peck, three years after being Atticus Finch, steps from one, says, good morning. From the other, it isn't. It is, wearing her cheekbones. <laughs> My father's breakfast is nervous in his stomach, but he grabs his Argus, pen, and yes, they'll sign. Her high heels echo away through the whole valley. That's how my father tells it. Let's gloss over how his filming dates aren't quite the same as Google's. <laughs> the way Sophia Loren formed her S's suspiciously like his. <laughs> Let's look instead at this photo of the crowd gathered that day he walked towards to share those autographs, his fame. There, front and middle, with her sister, the girl he hasn't met yet. There, my mother. Um, so this poem is uh, about my mother arriving in India in, um, on November 5th, 1968. My mother was born in Nerkwes, North Wales, and for some reason unknown to everyone in her family, she fell in love with an Indian man and followed him all the way to India, where she still lives. And uh, this poem, um, I, I was reading the papers about what was going on in the world, and I thought it was an interesting way to pin your personal history to, you know, the world history. So this is Falling, 1968. My mother arrives in India, breathless, leaning against the airport railing, looking sad, bereft, as though she's never put her head against the wind before. It is Guy Fawkes Day, 1968, the start of National Smallpox Eradication Week. It has been raining, cruel, historic, monsoon rain, uprooting posts along the border where Pakistan, only 21, like her, is drowning in silver cattle skulls, locust dreams. My father, standing on a cusp of sudden light, waits like sin to watch her fall. The rest of the world is falling too, students, Bedouins, lorry drivers, in West Berlin, Amman, Utakamund, throwing their Marxist lives into ideas like liberation, like love. My mother, moving across the air of all this, must have known how falling in love is something like dying after all, something the seas and sky evade to survive the centuries. 
Perhaps this is why she agrees to tumble to the blackened chambers of the earth like a virgin queen ant on her nuptial flight, burying the snow-lit nights of her youth in galleries of dust, blades of wing. So later, after birthing kingdoms from the gauze of her Celtic belly, she can say she was the illumination once, the slow possibility of love in my father's life. This is called Song. So come to me, by plane, by train, by car, by unicycle girl, by self-drive van, by Twitter, FaceTime, or by sleight of hand. O oh, lease yourself a pack mule, a giraffe. O oh, steal yourself a moped. Pay a man to carry you here, girl, on piggyback. Or get the railway to lay extra track up to my door, up to my waiting hands. So come to me, on fresh air or on credit. O oh, hoof it, leg it. Go by Shanks's pony over stony ground and live off grass or hedgerow, girl, whatever you can forage, and rest on riverbanks beneath a roof of forest. Navigate your way by stars or GPS, but listen, girl, be quick. Oh, speed yourself towards my waiting skin. So come to me. Oh, score yourself a gun, a false moustache girl, and a native tongue, and smuggle yourself in the early hours, under wire and across the border. Or buy yourself a wrecked and promising motorhome, and let dawn find you, girl, with oil-stained cheeks just working till it purrs or goes. Or drive towards my waiting bones. So come, by raft, by hovercraft, or do a goose-fat, nose-clipped, brave or water-winged breaststroke through the sea that's parting me from you, or fit a tractor engine to a lilo, rubber ring, a rowing boat. My home's made by these hands, this skin, these bones. My home is made of straw and fragile stars. Oh, come to me. Oh, make this where you are. Love poem. Ultimately, we will lose each other to something. I would hope for a grand circumstance, death or disaster, but it might not be that way at all. It might be that you walk out one morning after making love to buy cigarettes and never return, or I fall in love with another man. It might be a slow drift into indifference, Either way, we'll have to learn to bear the weight of the eventuality that we will lose each other to something. So why not begin now while your head rests in my lap like a perfect moon and the dogs on the beach are howling? Why not reach for a seam in this South Indian night and tear it just a little so the falling can begin? Because later, when we cross each other on the streets and are forced to look away, when we've thrown the disregarded pieces of our togetherness into bedroom drawers and the smell of our bodies is disappearing like the sweet decay of lilies, what will we call it when it's no longer love? Thank you.